Welcome back to another ratings video on, well, Madden 24, kind of. Uh, yesterday, you probably would have seen a most overpowered rookies. This is kind of like the same style, but the opposite spectrum a little bit, where they're still really overpowered, but they're sleepers. Uh, now, I will say this year's list is a little bit worse than most years, and it's not because that the sleepers are bad or the players are bad. It's actually the opposite. It's that most of the rookies are actually just so damn good in the game that there really aren't many under 70 overall players in general. So my definition of a sleeper would be someone that's under a 70 overall. There might be some guys that you have obviously heard of, but there's also some you might not have. I also decided to leave off anyone that was 24, and for the most part, 23, but there are a few, I think, that are on here that are 23 years old. You know, like, I think DJ Johnson, he's like either 24 or 25, super fast, but, you know, your speed and all that doesn't matter if you're obviously, like, really old, because, you know, this is mainly a franchise video, you don't really care too much about the regular ratings, right, for, you know, head-to-head -head or whatever, but the number 10 player is going to be a cornerback who I've drafted many times in Madden 23 in the, uh, you know, user-created CPU kind of drafts. And that's going to be Terrell Smith, the Chicago Bear, who has 92 speed, 95 excel as a corner, 68 overall. Uh, he is six foot one, but he is 23 years old, sadly. 65 catch can obviously get it done. Agility's not great, but most of the corners aren't going to be 82 jumping. You'd like more, but in general, unless Madden's way different this year, which, I mean, it played differently, but I wouldn't say it's going to be way different. Jumping doesn't matter as much. It really, truly is just the size and speed that matters the most when you're talking about these wide receiver cornerback uh, interactions. Actions, uh, but obviously injury stamina toughness is solid. Um, juke ability, and eh, who gives a damn? Uh, but coverage, man coverage is lacking a little bit at 63. But 70 zone coverage, 75 pursuit, 55 block shedding is actually pretty damn good for a cornerback. I would say the most a corner has in the game is maybe like in the low 70 uh, 60s. Uh, hit power at 79. That's also another really high rating for a cornerback. And then 77 press, which for a rookie is very good. I actually want to compare this to those cornerbacks because, like I said, those two ratings there I think are actually pretty comparable to some of the best in the game. The highest block shed in the game is Hilton at 64, and you can see it drops pretty drastically, so one of the higher block shedders in the game. And then as far as hit power, that might be in the top 10, and it is. Uh, you can see him right here. That is like number 8 or so, right up there with hit power, so... Definitely a little bit of a sleeper corner, and with that that size, maybe kind of reminded me a little bit of a uh, Zion McCollum, which obviously if you've been watching our Miners franchise, which you should have seen an episode yesterday, uh, you know you know that he killed it. He's been killing it for us. Very similar to him, a little bit slower, a little bit shorter, but uh, same kind of age, speed-ish, and you know some of those ratings. And then for number nine, we have a safety, and I cannot spell. That is Mr. Brandon Hill. This, of course, all live. Uh, well, I'm recording this live. It's not actually live. Catching's a little low at 60, but he is a safety. Safeties typically have the more uncontested pick, if you will, because they jump in front of everyone. But 91 speed, 95 excel. I believe he is 5'11", which isn't the highest of heights. But obviously, as a 65 overall, he is the true definition of a sleeper. A little bit of juke ability. It is what it is. Is that 90 jump? It is 90 change of direction. Uh, which for a safety is actually really, really good. Zone is lacking a little bit at 66, but 87 hit power is definitely solid. Where is the block shed? 53. I mean, like I said, we showed the corners. Most of the players in the game are going to be pretty low block shedding. 85 jumping is pretty good. But in general, obviously, with that speed, the hit power, uh, I believe he's 22. You know, I would assume he's going to be normal dev unless, you know, EA really loves him for some reason. One breakout, and, you know, you're looking at probably 73, 74 zone coverage and, you know, obviously start of element trade and... He's got all the potential in the world. That is one of those super sleepers that you could trade for and uh, develop. You know, safety is one of those pos pos positions where I usually don't care too much about their ratings other than speed. If they're fast, I let them roll, and then, you know, you get a breakout, and you're cooking. Now we have number eight, the wide receiver Trey Palmer. He's six foot tall, 95 speed, 92 excel. Once again, there's a lot of really good rookies, uh, especially at wide receiver this year in Madden, but most of those guys aren't sleepers. Most of them are higher than 70, like Jalen Hyatt's like super good catching 73, 74 overall. Trey Palmer is one of those under 70s that is pretty fast. Uh, I had another guy who I believe played for place for the Saints, but he's 24. He was like 92 speed, six foot four, but 
it's 24 years old doesn't matter like it's just a gg and then i think uh darius from the uh chargers he's 5'8 very similar ratings to palmer so i was like 5'8 six foot tall there's a little bit of a difference in height there um you know very raw obviously but most of the receivers catching this year in the game is actually very close to like 80 so you usually don't have to worry about catching at least for this mountain unless once again it's all relative like if you know everyone's catching goes up but catching doesn't matter as much when you're in the low 80s or high 70s then maybe it changes but most of the guys i've seen are like 77 to, to 82 catching for the rookie range which trey palmer fitting in at number eight i mean it's a sleeper 68 overall of course as a um you know kind of uh honorable mention darius davis 94 speed 94 excel a little bit higher of an overall but once again five foot eight could be really fun i don't know why the hell i clicked that uh, but could be a lot of fun because he's small. But as far as like sleeper goes, kind of counts closer to 70 in general. But uh, overall, you know, he's on the list too, but 59 release. That is brutal. And obviously, super short. And at number seven, Adabare, uh, 66 overall, 89 speed, 92 excel. Once again, I really struggle to find pass rushers that were sleepers because one, a lot of the pass rushers are just good in the game for rookies. Uh, but two, all of them, a lot of them are like 24-ish. I've, I've even seen a 25. So it was really strugglesome to find one. But 67 power move, 67 block shed. Uh, I believe he is 22 years old with 89 speed, 92 excel. Definitely fits on the, uh, the underrated list. Uh, of course, very good power move, very good block shed. Fast as can be and... Just in general, you know, a, a good guy. Like, if you're thinking about who you want to develop, because most teams are going to have one decent pass rusher and then the other one's going to be garbage, this guy could be your guy, especially since, once again, it's fun to develop rookies. Not really much more to say about him, though. It's just straightforward. Those are his ratings. You know, it's not like looking at a safety that could be really good at man coverage or really good at block shed or really good at hit power. He's just okay at power and block shed, and he's fast. That's, that's really all there is. Then we have Batman, Michael Keaton over here. Uh, Keaton Mitchell, 64 overall, 93 speed, 95 excel. And unlike the previous years of Vikings running backs that look similar to this when it comes to speed, he's actually 21. He's also pretty short, 5'8 or 5'9, which is kind of fun for Madden. You don't want those big types like Derrick Henry that just don't work in the game. They get contacted too easily. So the smaller you are, the better you are. Uh, 82 carrying is obviously pretty good. 71 catching. Agility's a little iffy, so I imagine the change of direction is not going to be great, but that speed is ridiculous. Injury's good enough. Stamina's good enough. Toughness, eh, you know. Let's be honest with ourselves. Juke move. Uh, change of direction, 82, which is kind of standard for young uh, running backs, uh, especially if you're going to draft one CPU. 83 juke move. 79 spin move is solid. We saw, you know talked about that catching at 71. Not bad at all. The rest of the ratings pretty iffy, but most running backs are gonna have pretty bad like route running and you know spec catch and catching traffic and whatnot. But a 64 overall in Madden terms goes for less than a seventh round pick. So obviously, if you're training with a user, they might want to use them. But the Ravens do have some decent running backs, so you might be able to make a play. I will say though, if your franchise is like ours, user wise, uh, it's gonna be hard to trade for them because no one's gonna be like, oh, here's a six round pick for him. Uh, you know, that, that's kind of what he's kind of worth because of the overall and he is raw, but no one's going to approve that and I would doubt anyone's going to accept that. So in a user league, it might actually be harder to get him because it's like, do you want to pay that much for a low overall even though he's fast? I don't know. But in a you you know non-user league, you're playing against the CPU. I mean, that's uh, you pretty much just give away like a backup fullback. They're probably going to take it. And this Madden, the, uh, the, the best sleepers, which a lot of them are in fairness, is linebacker D Winters comes in at number five, 89 speed, 93 excel, 65 catch, and his change of direction was good, right? I'm, I'm hoping I'm not choosing. Oh, it was only 71. Yeah, my man should probably not be this high, but he's still pretty uh, good. 77 jumping uh, is a little lackluster in fairness, but very good change of direction. His ratings across the board is coverage for a linebacker. You might not think that's good, but it's actually pretty good. 64 man, 63 zone coverage is actually not bad at all, especially when he's considered an outside linebacker, if you will. But 87 hit power on top of it. Press is iffy. That's kind of how it goes at linebackers. But, you know, he's pretty solid, obviously. And I thought he had a, a little bit of pass rush ability. Did he not? He did not. Okay, so I'm absolutely wrong there. Yeah, if I were to redo this list, I probably would have had him behind uh, Mitchell, but it's only one spot, so it really doesn't matter. But D. Winter is very fast, and uh, you know the main reason why he's on this list is a lot of the other guys are kind of older. He's not. 
Now we move on to number four, a guy that we actually use for a little bit in our Miners franchise, but he's actually technically better in the actual game than we had him, is Max Duggan, the quarterback backup for the Chargers. 88 speed, 88 excel, 88 throw power. The throw power is just good enough to get away with. Once again, you're developing these guys. You're hoping for a breakout. You're hoping for, you know, upgrades. Throw power actually hasn't been that hard to get in Madden. You're usually good for a good three to four power throw power upgrades after a couple of seasons. Uh, but in general, obviously, you're, you're there for that speed. Uh, and believe it or not, his his passing ratings are actually not bad at all, if I can actually find them. You can see 80 short, 76 medium, 74 deep, 74 play action, 76 throw on the run. He's actually pretty damn good. Now, you can almost argue that uh, Anthony Richardson could be on the list, but A, he's not really a sleeper, right? Like, everyone knows about him. Everyone, that's, like, one of the first players that most people looked up, probably, on the ratings. But his overall is lower. But this is, like, like almost the best you're going to get when it comes to sleeper quarterbacks. There's a couple other guys that are similar in speed, similar in throw power, like uh, Cunningham. But the accuracies are just like five worse in pretty much everything. So Duggan is clearly the guy here when it comes to sleeper quarterbacks. He is the number one without a doubt. And then for number three, an ultra sleeper, a guy that a lot of us you know know about, Siaki Ika, um, huge player, like 357 or something like that. Pretty damn young, uh, but 66 overall, which is like whoa, that's that's pretty low, dude. 66. There's no way you could be decent. Well, strength 90. Would love to be a little bit higher than that to be honest, um, but. The thing that makes him actually crazy is the fact that his block shed is 76. Obviously, you're not going to get much when it comes to the pass rush department, but he is a nose tackle after all. So if you're in a 3-4 and you don't have that DT, he is the guy. Like Siaki Ika, 76 block shed for a 66 overall is the ultimate definition of a sleeper. And uh, I was going to have Coburn on the list, but he's just nowhere near as good as Ika 80 hit power, which, I mean, I don't really know how that's going to help you too much, but up there at number three, because once again, that overall compared to the block shed is just shocking. It's 10 block shed higher than his overall, which I don't know how he's only a 66 overall with that. Really, I, I don't know because his awareness is above it. His strength is above it, obviously. His uh, block shed's above it. You know, some of the most important ratings for the DT are above that, so... He's a little bit on the slower side, but once again, he's 357. And I'm not just saying this as a Packers fan. Luke Musgrave is absolutely a sleeper, and he ranks in at number two for us. This is a six foot six, 87 speed, 89 excel tight end. Catching's a little iffy at 74 catching. Uh, I'm a little surprised by that, to be fair. Where is his break tackle? Because that would be the rating that I would have very low if I was going to rate him. Uh, obviously, his trucking looks pretty bad there, so kind of makes sense. Injury, stamina, toughness. Actually, not bad injury and toughness, considering. 86 jumping is pretty good. 62 run block, which, you know, tight ends don't block too well in Madden. Let's just be honest. Change direction is iffy, but he is a big tight end. Why are you changing directions? What are you dumb? Um, and then where is his other ratings? The catching is his biggest problem by far, but once again, you're getting a 66 overall, 87 speed, 89 excel, 6 foot 6 tight end. It's weird because... You know, he was like a second-round draft pick for him to be a sleeper, but those ratings, I mean, the, that overall counts as a sleeper. It just does. 66 overall is so low, yet he's so high potential. I mean, this is like Albert O on crack back when Albert O was in the game. Like, this is this is next level, but, you know, route running's a little iffy, obviously, but okay enough catching, very fast, which is the big thing for tight ends. Most people can develop any tight end in the game because – Anything over, like, 85 speed, they just get open no matter what their ratings are. It just, I don't know how, they just do. And with 87 speed, 89 XL, with that size, you're going to get open. He is absolutely the number two guy on the list. And, I mean, as a Packers fan, this isn't really a good reason to be because, once again, he should be higher than that. Him and Tucker Craft being 66 overalls in the game when it's considered one of the better tight end classes, and those two names are high up on that list. Those aren't just, like, random names is pretty shocking it's pretty surprising to be honest uh, I also am a little surprised he is that fast like I would have probably put him at like 86 88 or 87 uh, you know speed to excel but hey we'll take it he could be a really fun player from Madden 24 and then we have the number one who a lot of people should have seen coming Owen Papo coming in at 22 years old six foot one and a blazing 93 speed 95 excel this isn't a wide receiver this isn't a corner this isn't a running back. This is a linebacker. 66 overall. Catching 62, you could absolutely work with that. And the best part about him is he actually does have 
good change of direction as well. 81 change of direction. The Cardinals just love the freaks at linebacker, quote unquote safety. If you want to, you know, talk about Simmons a little bit. 85 uh, jumping is great. Injury stamina toughness you can have absolutely get away with. Um, juke move is up there with some of the players we've looked at already. Coverage a little lacking at 60 zone, 65 man, but it's definitely good enough when you consider the speed. That's your user linebacker anyways. Pursuit at 87 is very intriguing. And then of course, he has 86 hit power as well. This was always going to be the number one. Uh, I knew he'd be fast, but when you consider, you know, how Devin White and Devin Bush were did, you know, with similar kind of uh, numbers in the combine, you would have thought he probably would have been like 91-ish speed. But 93 speed, 95 excel for a rookie linebacker. I mean, he is like everyone's number one user when it comes to trying to get a cheap trade piece. I honestly feel like for most of my series, I probably won't even go for him because he's just too OP. Like, it's just, especially since he's not huge. In, you know, in real life, it's like, oh, 6'4", 90 speed level, like Quay Walker type. It's like crazy. But in game, you actually do want those shorter guys, especially since the linebackers don't jump or go for the pick anyways. You know, if you get that speed and that good change direction because they're a little bit on the shorter side at 6'1", you actually get in front of the ball a lot more often than you would if you were 6'4", 6'5", because the change direction, even if it's really high, it just doesn't work well with that size for some reason. And uh, ultimately, this guy is going to be a freak user. I actually, like, wouldn't surprise me if he's actually, like, the third best user in the game. Like, top three best user in the game already. And he hasn't, you know, we haven't even played the game yet. But that's going to be my list for the top ten most underrated sleeper-ish players that you should be trading for or using in Madden 24. Like I said, not all of these guys are going to be surprises to you guys. A lot of you guys have, you know, heard of them. Uh, but I would imagine one or two, you know, you probably haven't heard of. So if that's the case and that, that you know, that happens, which, you know, not everyone's knowledge or, you know, knowing of every player is the same. So if that happens, then uh, we've done our job. That's that's pretty much it. If you guys enjoy this one, maybe leave a like. Subscribe if you're new, if you've, especially if you've been enjoying these kind of Madden 24 ratings videos. Uh, if you're not new, really appreciate continued support on the channel. If you have any suggestions for another type of video, like top 10 fastest players in the game or, you know, whatever, you know, let me know in the comment section below. Typically, I do like two to three because then it's like after that, it's like you're just stretching it. But so far, the ones we've done, they make sense and I do like them and it's fun to talk about them. Um, but yeah, if there's uh, any ratings in the game, you're like, oh, this is bull crap. I can't believe this guy's rated such and such. Let me know in the comment section below. I'll reply to you be like you're right dude that's that's pretty crazy but you know the ratings they're obviously going to change as the the year goes on so it doesn't really matter too much out the gate but at the same time a lot of us do play our franchises from the start of the year and play them all the way through or very long in so they kind of do matter at the same time early on but yeah that's about it maybe follow me on twitter jumpy care second channel care plays and that's about it thanks for watching hope you guys come back for next video but until next video see ya